That is the state's case. Therefore, your honors, I urge the court to deny this appeal. Mr. Egan, isn't there anything you wish to add? No, Your Honor. Very well. We'll take this under advisement. assume command of a fighter squad. Imagine, Twice if you will, that cold night last February. Home for the evening after a long day at work, Amy Beth Sawyer. Young, bright, pretty. Had just finished taking a shower. Before getting ready for bed, she'd fixed herself a cup of coffee. Suddenly, she thinks she hears someone at the door. Who is it, she may have asked. She moves toward the door and stops, alert, listening. Who's there? Nothing. Silence. She steps cautiously toward the entryway. Suddenly, the door opens. Before she can step back, before she can defend herself, she is stabbed. Brutally. Again and again. Until finally, Amy Beth Sawyer slumps to the floor. Dead. Her killer? Only a cruel, heartless, Person could take the life of a beautiful young girl. Members of the jury, the evidence clearly shows that person to be the defendant, Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Parks. You have heard how sheriff's deputies apprehended Lieutenant Colonel Parks, still at the scene and how the fingerprints on the murder weapon were identified as those of Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Parks. You have heard the testimony of Amy Beth's employer, Jason Sloan, who was a witness to their clandestine relationship. You have heard the testimony of Mr. Sloan's wife, Althea Sloan, who told us of Parks' repeated calls to Amy Beth at her office. You have heard the testimony of Amy Beth's former boyfriend, Daryl Hurley, who went to Amy Beth's one night and discovered Lieutenant Colonel Parks there. You have even heard the testimony of one of Lieutenant Colonel Parks' squadron pilots, young Lieutenant Wilkins, who introduced Parks to Amy Beth. These facts lead us to one inescapable because Amy Beth Sawyer wanted to break off their illicit affair, because Amy Beth Sawyer threatened to reveal that affair to Park's wife, Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Parks did cruelly and viciously stab Amy Beth Sawyer. find the defendant, Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Parks, guilty of first-degree murder for the killing of Amy Beth Sawyer.
Appeal denied. Hey, Parks. Here's what your wife sent for you to wear to the hearing tomorrow. The van leaves at six sharp. Thanks, Billy Ray. Good luck, Colonel. I hope finding that new witness gets you a retrial. you two here. As I recall, when you sat on the appellate bench, you upheld my conviction and denied Park's appeal. You should also recall that I reserved comment on the merits of your case. I still do. Well, I hope you haven't come all this way to help a desperate attorney. This case is going down for a third and final time. Sorry. With this new witness, Mr. Egan might prevail. I wouldn't be too positive, Mr. Mason, with or without a new witness. I am never too positive, Mr. Reston. Here's the man of the hour now. Lester McCarran. This is Perry Mason. Okay. Dallas Street. Hello. And this is the Colonel's wife, Shannon Parks. Glad to meet you, Mrs. Parks. Thank you. I don't understand, Mr. Mason. You were one of the judges that turned down my husband's appeal. The court ruled that the trial was fair, nothing more. I voted with the court. But I never said I concurred with the verdict of the jury. See, Mr. Mason has been kind enough to come here and counsel us on the best way to handle the retrial. That is, once Mr. McCarran has uh, given his testimony. Well, I think uh, we ought to be getting in now. Mr. Mason, can I talk to you for a minute? Yes. Mr. Mason, I could use some advice about my testimony. My best advice is to tell the truth as you know it. I wish it were that simple. It is. It is. Mr. McCarran? Yes, I'm McCarran. This was left for you. Thank you. coroner testified that Miss Sawyer died between 7 and 10 p.m. Now, later it was established that the defendant left his office just after 8 p.m. and was seen driving down the Old Woods Road on his way to the Sawyer condominium. Now, about a mile out of town, he stopped to help a stranded motorist with engine problems. That motorist was Lester McCarran. Mr. McCarran will establish that the defendant was with him making repairs until well after 10 p.m. If that is his testimony, it would appear to be highly exculpatory. Let's put him on the stand, Mr. Egan. Mr. McCarran? Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Sure. I mean, I do. Mr. McCarran, would you please tell the court where you were the night Amy Beth Sawyer was murdered? Well, uh... That's hard to say, exactly. Hard to say? Were you or were you not stranded on the Old Woods Road on the evening of this murder? I might have been, but I'm not sure now. Not sure? 
It was over two years ago. How can I be sure it was the same night? I didn't even know she'd been killed. Uh, Mark, I mean, I thought we had a conversation about this. Mr. Parks, you're out of order. Mr. McCarran, may I remind you that you are under oath? Now, I ask you again. Were you not with Colonel Parks on the Old Woods Road until after 10 p.m. on the night of February 17th? I told you, I don't remember. I'm sorry, but I just don't remember. God's sakes. Mr. Parks, sit down. You know we were together. Now, come on, you know I was there. You Mr. Know Parks, I was... you will be seated Look, now. We'll have to remove this part. Kevin, please. Oh, don't Mr. you want Parks. to tell him I didn't kill the lady? I didn't kill her. That's it? Bailiff, please remove the defendant. Mr. McCarran, you can step down. Court is in recess for one hour, and I will see counsel in my chambers. Mr. McCarran, wait. Look, I'm sorry. I've got to get to a phone. I don't understand. He was ready. He was eager to testify. He looked absolutely frightened. Something must have changed his mind. More likely someone. Before he came in, he got a note. And what appeared to be a, a gold locket. Mark, we can't just let him run out like this. He's Kevin's only hope. She's right. He is Kevin's only hope. McCarran's agreed to have dinner tonight, but he's leaving first thing in the morning. Why do you want to talk to him? I suspect the locket and the note he received on his way into the hearing had something to do with his sudden change of mind. I want to talk to him about that. Yeah. Now the sheriff's suggesting McCarran and the hearing were just a setup so uh, Kevin could try and make a break. way just to testify. Look, I told you before, there were some threatening phone calls after I decided to come back and testify. Why wasn't I told about this? We figured they were just crank calls. Well, maybe they weren't. And I have nothing against helping Colonel Parks, but I'm not going to put my wife's safety on the line Your to do wife? it. What makes you think she's in danger? Does that note and locket you received have something to do with it? I told you about that. I never said anything about that. It was your wife's locket, wasn't it? All right. What did the note say, Mr. McCarran? It said enough for me to know to keep my mouth shut and stay out of this. Besides, Parks escaped, right? That proves he's guilty, doesn't it? Have you been able to reach your wife? No, she hasn't been home.
Now listen, we can arrange to protect you and your wife. I don't want your help. Excuse me, Mr. McCarran. Yes? The hotel desk just called with a message for you to call your wife. They did? Oh, thank God. Is there a phone here I can use? To the back. Mr. McCarran. What? Came from the back. Uh, yeah, operator, uh, connect me to the sheriff's department, please, and hurry. Yeah, uh, you know that fella that escaped from the courthouse yesterday, the, the one who was all over the TV last night? I believe I just passed him about uh, 10 miles outside of town on old Route 99. Yes, sir. Jail and kill that witness. That's what happened. I know how it must look to you. Kevin is innocent. It hasn't been easy to believe in him, yet I do. I wish you would too. Look, Mr. Mason, representing Colonel Parks through this whole thing. It's had a very disturbing impact on my life. In fact, it's even made me question if I still want to continue working as an attorney. I must say, I'm not sure at this point that I'm qualified to handle this case anymore. I guess what I'm saying is be profoundly grateful if you would take it over for me. 
Will you consider it, Mr. Mason? So, I think whoever murdered Amy Beth Sawyer had to stop McCarran from testifying. Any promising suspects? Well, we should concentrate on the original witnesses against Parks. We need to find out more about Miss Sawyer's boyfriend, Daryl Hurley, and her employer, Jason Sloan, and his wife, Althea. Add to that list Lieutenant Wilkins. He was one of Parks squadron pilots. I'll get on it right away. And since all the possible suspects were at the hearing yesterday, it means there's also an accomplice to contend with. The man who helped Colonel Parks escape? I think abducted would be more accurate. Paul? You need to find that man. Sergeant? This is a restricted crime scene, Mr. Mason, so unless you... I represent some... Colonel Parks. Well, in that case, on Trevoux, sir. You remember Mr. Drake? Mr. Drake, good to see you again. His body was right around in there. Mm -hmm. Karen was turned over. All right, Sergeant. What we have here, Mr. Mason, is Colonel Parks' fingerprints were all over the gun used to kill McCarran. We found threads on a nail that match up with the tear in the coat Colonel Parks was wearing. You will, of course, be sent a copy of my report, but in the meantime, sir, is that tight enough for you? Evidence almost as damning as the Amy Beth Sawyer case. You handled that investigation also, didn't you? Yes, I did, Mr. Mason. Now, did you find anything unusual on Mr. McCarran, such as a note? We didn't find a note. We found just a usual and this. Eric, let me have that, please, sir. Thank you, Eric. To my beautiful bride, Denise. Someone sent this to him, along with the note. Mark Egan saw him receive both just before he entered the courtroom. Again, Mr. Mason, we didn't find a note. Now, I'll tell you what I think, sir. I think Colonel Parks followed him here, and I think Colonel Parks killed him. The reason why he killed him, McCarran refused to testify. What about the threats against Mr. McCarran's wife? We know about that, sir. You checked with the desk to make sure, in fact, a message was sent by his wife? Which would not change the basic fact that the preponderance of evidence clearly indicate Colonel Parks killed McCarran. We will, of course, check on everything connected to this case to include the accomplice who broke Colonel Parks out of our courthouse. We believe Colonel Parks was kidnapped from your courthouse. Mr. Mason, Mr. Mason, Mr. Mason, I'm inclined to think that you gentlemen will believe almost anything. We do believe that Colonel Parks has been elaborately framed. Now, as soon as the kidnapper is in custody, I have a few questions for him. We must find him first, Mr. Mason. And we will keep on trying. You don't mind if I try, too? Good day, Sergeant. What else can you tell us about the man in the elevator? Nothing. Uh, I tried to get a look at him, but uh, I passed out before I got a chance. Doesn't give me much to go on. What about when you woke up? Maybe someone driving by? I didn't see anyone. You were out for a couple of minutes before you realized where you were. Did you hear something? Maybe the sound of a truck? Well, I heard a car leaving, but it... Something wrong? That's probably just another nightmare. Nightmare? Yeah, I... Uh... Keep having this dream about a MIG on my tail. It's got me locked on, and I know he's going to fire the missile. I can't do anything about it. It's probably nothing, but every time I have the dream, it's in F4s, and this time it sounded like A7s. A7s? Oh, I'm sorry. 
A-7 is a plane we use for fighter training. Tell me something, Colonel. Do these training flights ever pass over the area where you were found? Oh, yes, sir. We use that grid area quite often for low-level runs. Paul, find out if there are any planes in that area. One of the pilots might have seen something. You might check with base ops. Uh, if Captain O'Malley's still there, that's the best place to start. First thing in the morning. In your trial, Colonel, the prosecution claimed you were having an affair with Miss Sawyer. You want me to tell you the whole thing's untrue? Hmm? <laughs> well, it is, believe me. I didn't even meet Amy Beth until Lieutenant Wilkins introduced me to her at a party, and I only saw her two times after that. You testified she called you about a problem she couldn't discuss over the phone. Yes, sir, she did. She was very upset. And I told her that I would talk to her after I got off work, but she never asked me about the problem. I got the feeling that she was feeling me out, you know, to see if I was an individual she could trust. And she called you again? Yes, sir. That's when we uh, met at her condo, and then her boyfriend showed up banging on the door, uh, Daryl Hurley. Of course, when he saw me there, he got pretty steamed, and I thought it was in everybody's best interest that I get out of there. Why did you agree to meet with Amy Beth? She had something of a reputation, didn't she? Come on, Mr. Mason. Because everybody in town thought she was a tramp? Well, that appears to be the general perception. Listen, I don't know what you've heard, but Amy Beth was a person of... Integrity. Had she and Lieutenant Wilkins been seeing a lot of each other? I didn't pay attention to Lieutenant Wilkins' private life. It was none of my business. And you never found out what it was she wanted to talk about? No, sir. I did get the feeling that it was connected with something or, or someone on the base, but like I said before, she was always very cautious about the whole thing. Well... We'll have to find out how cautious, won't we? Good night. See ya. Today. Has been reassigned. Try flight prep and debriefing. Hangar 33. Hangar 33 is down at the end of the field. I'll try to meet up with you there later. All right. I'm going to speak to the lieutenant if that's all right. Sure. That's fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Paul Drake. Lieutenant Peter Graham. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, too. Back from a training mission? Yeah, no getting around that, is there? If you find a way, you let me know. Well, that kind of comes with the territory, though, doesn't yes, it? Yes, sir. Let me ask a question. Is it possible you were flying this time yesterday morning? As a matter of fact, it was. Why? Well, is it likely that you would have seen anything on a highway uh, north of town, runs up into the mountains? Sir, we cross that highway doing better than 325 knots. Now, of course, camera can pick something up. The camera? What, you take pictures? Well, they don't let us shoot any live ammo. It sort of makes natives restless, if you know what I mean. So we shoot video instead. Any chance I could see the tape from yesterday morning? Uh, I don't know about that. You'd have to talk to Captain O'Malley, Hangar 33. All right, well, thank you very much, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. So, anyway, when I found out that there might be a tape, I thought I'd like to see it if I can. Well, we can run the tapes in a few minutes. I'm having them queued up now. I still have to check with the legal office to get you cleared for look-see. All right, well, I appreciate it, Captain. Colonel Parks is more than an officer and a gentleman. He's my friend. Earning respect as a woman in the Air Force isn't always a smooth course, Mr. Drake. Colonel Parks... Help me over some of the rough spots. And you don't think he's guilty either? <laughs> Judging by the man, no. Illicit affairs, murder, not Colonel Parks. I mean, it just doesn't, it just doesn't fly. Well, one thing for sure. What's that? He knew a good officer when he saw one. Did he 
your roster schedules, Captain. Thank you, Lieutenant Wilkins. Lieutenant Wilkins, didn't he testify at Colonel Parks' trial? That's right. I'll be right back. Lieutenant Wilkins! Hey, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Who are you? Paul Drake. I work for Colonel Parks' defense attorney. Well, I've got nothing against Colonel Parks, but I've said all I have to say. <laughs> Is that why we're walking so fast? I'm out of breath here. <laughs> I've got an appointment in town. You see, listen, you know, I heard your testimony at the first trial. I've got nothing to add. Tell me something. Did you and Amy Beth Sawyer go out a lot, or did you just get lucky that night? Sir, I'm not going to honor that with a response. You did get lucky. I have a doctor's appointment. again, okay? Morning. Can I help you, gents? Yes, I have an appointment with Mr. Sloan. My name's Mason. Sure thing, Mr. Mason. I'm uh, Ellis Milborn, his brother-in-law. Mason, you're, uh, you're Park's new lawyer, aren't you? That's right. This is going to be your chance to get uh, in on the ground floor. He should be finished with his presentation. I'll send him right over. Right here on may take site. a minute. Centrally located just off the freeway. Now we're planning not only the shopping mall, but also housing, restaurant, and entertainment facilities. It's going to be the largest multi-purpose development in the history of this city. Mason's over there. Uh-huh. OK, now, uh, Ellis Milborn here has a schedule of terms and proposals. If any of you folks are interested in any more information about Milborn Center, he'll be happy to work with you. Thanks very much. Morning, morning, morning. morning Stacks of information right here, spec sheets, floor plans. This is some of the big chains that are interested. This appears to be a very ambitious project, Mr. Sloan. Oh, it's prime, really prime. How can I help you, Mr. Mason? I understand Amy Beth Sawyer was working as your executive assistant. She was a crackerjack in the office. I really miss her. Is that why you provided her with the condominium she was living in when she was murdered? Well, now it's uh, not exactly the way you make it sound. See, her rent was being raised where she was, so I helped her out. We kept that condo for out-of-town investors. This was just a temporary arrangement. I take it Mrs. Sloan approved? It was her idea. How long did Miss Sawyer live there? Five, maybe six months. Once she was in there, I couldn't just kick her out. Besides, her old boyfriend, Daryl Hurley, kept begging her to come back with him. He made all kinds of trouble trying to get her back. You obviously took a personal interest in Miss Sawyer's well-being. Anything wrong with that, Mr. Mason? Of course, you had a key to the condo. Of course I had a key to the condo. I owned it. Why do you ask? There were no signs of forced entry. Whoever murdered Miss Sawyer either was let in or had a key. Miss Sawyer was murdered and Parks was convicted. Now, what are you doing, Mason? Trying to set the record straight. Where were you the night she was killed, Mr. Sloan? All right. I was going over some accounts at my office. Alone? Yes, alone. But that big war hero killed her and everyone in town knows it. Everyone but me. Good day, Mr. Mason. These are the ones that would have the highway in them, Mr. Drake. Call me Paul. Well, then maybe you should call me Terry. All right. Wait a minute. Right there. I'll rewind and stop motion. I don't know. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Even with the blob, I don't think I can see those license plate numbers. You need to find this car? Well, it would sure put me closer to the guy driving it. I have a couple of days' leave saved up. I'd like to help you look for I appreciate that, but without the plate numbers, the legwork alone might take days. Well, why don't we go after the same way you got the picture? What do you mean? Go up in an A7? 
No, of course not. would have heard us coming in. It's locked. I'd be tempted to break in, but it might blow as evidence. What do you suppose it's doing here all by itself? You got me. Stashed, I guess. Didn't leave on foot. Look, a second set of tire tracks. You do do this for a living. Well, we can't all be pilots. Motel. There's a cardboard box in the front seat. You make out the name on it? Daryl Hurley. Daryl Hurley? Who's he? It's a man we need to see. Come on, I want to get back to Perry. Yourself. 
You all right? Perry, yeah, we're fine. They just want to do a couple routine checks back at the hospital. You must be Perry Mason. I'm Terry O'Malley. Oh, Captain. Looks like you saved his life. Well, I'm afraid it was the other way around, Mr. Mason. Perry, we found the car. I also got a fairly good look at the guy who was shooting at us. Had a full beard, plaid shirt. Kind of a hunter-looking guy. Drake. We just got a report on that license plate number you gave us. It was stolen. Figures. We still have that videotape of the car. What videotape? There was video taken from a fighter plane showing a second car in the area where they found Colonel Parks. Captain, this is a criminal investigation. I expect to have that tape on my desk this afternoon. Yes, Sergeant. What else can you tell me about that car, Drake? There was a cardboard box in the front seat with the name of Daryl Hurley on it. Daryl Hurley. Any objections to my being there when you question him, Sergeant? You are, of course, going to do that. And perhaps you would like for me to provide you with a car, too, Mr. Mason? Oh, thank you. But that won't be necessary. No, I don't own a green Ram Charger. And I don't know anybody who does. What's this all about, anyway? It's about the man who abducted Colonel Parks from the courthouse and who tried to kill my associate, Paul Drake. Uh, Daryl, this is Perry Mason. Mr. Mason is handling Colonel Parks' defense. Well, I was sitting in the courtroom when Parks broke loose. And you can ask any of my men. I've been here working straight since 7 this morning. Now, Daryl, I understand that there was a cardboard box on the front seat of the car with your name on it. Is there anything to that? It's going to take more than that to hang me. I have a warehouse full of boxes with my name on them. They're all over this city. Thank you very much, Daryl. Have a nice day, Mr. Mason. Looks like business is booming, Mr. Hurley. There are a lot of big contracts in this area now. I'm doing all right. Pity we can't say the same for Amy Beth. Must have been quite a blow to you when she broke off your relationship. Amy Beth is the best thing that ever happened to me. We were made for each other. She just needed a little time to straighten out her head enough to know it. Messing with those flyboys at that airbase, that's what got her killed. I assume you're referring to Colonel Parks. Well, I heard she'd gone for somebody up there. I didn't know who. Until I went to her condo that night, found her there with Parks. So you testified. How did you know she was involved with them? I don't need to put my finger in a light socket to know there's juice in it. He was there. I saw him. That was enough for me. Is that why you became so angry? So angry the Colonel decided to leave before you could start a fight? What difference does it make now? She's dead, isn't she? The time that Parks is going to get for this, he might as well be dead, too. You're just making trouble for everybody. Not everybody, Mr. Hurley. Not everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. Good. Thanks. I got the base legal office working on releasing that videotape. Any luck inside? You're staying here, all right, under the name of a Frank Johnson. The clerk gave me a fairly good description of him, too. All right, well, I guess we better call Sergeant Brock, huh? Got it all in good time, all in good time. As long as we're here, why don't we pay our Mr. Johnson a little visit? Well, I don't see his car anywhere. All the better. Just about finished in here? Yes, I am. Let's take a look around while we're here. You look in the bathroom and I'll check out the closet. Brush. 
the look of all this hair, he must be going bald. Well, the clerk did say that he was a big, hairy mountain man type. But what he needs with a blue button-down Oxford shirt, I don't know. If he's living in the hills, why check in here? And why would he rent a tent just to carry it around? And he's got two cars? Come on, that doesn't make any sense. Well, in any case, we're gonna get out of here while we still can. Mason Park's new lawyer? Mrs. Sloan. Uh, Mr. Mason. I'll lock up Ellis. Uh, we'll finish the leases in the morning. Oh, see you tomorrow, uh, Mr. Mason. My husband told me about your talk. I can't understand why you're digging into this again. We've all been through so much already. A man's life depends on it, Mrs. Sloan. I know. Amy Beth Sawyer, she worked here. Did you think she was effective? No, but my husband did. Amy Beth had a way with men, as you've probably already heard. But I was the one in the office with her day after day. And it was your idea to let her move into your company condominium? That was my husband's. Jason couldn't do enough with a little tart. You didn't object? Oh, I most certainly did. Until I realized it wasn't worth the fight. She wasn't interested in Jason. It was the colonel. She was on the phone constantly to the air base. You're sure of that? Mr. Mason, if you were trying to make a case that I was jealous enough of Amy Beth to murder her, forget it. The money in the family is mine, all mine. Jason knows he'll lose it if he strays very far. The night she was killed, where were you? At home, having a late supper with my husband. He'll confirm that. I don't think so. He told me he was working here at the office, alone. Good day, Mrs. Sloan. Perry, I can't make anything out of this Johnson guy. Everything about him's phony, including his name. Backwoods mountain type is losing his hair is about all I can come up with. Short of, I don't know, tracking down this laundry tag. Uh, Paul, hold it a second. I'll have it ready shortly. Have you called Sergeant Brock with any of this? I left a message for him, but he was out. What else? Just a one-sided conversation with Lieutenant Wilkins. Before he ran out on me, he said he had a doctor's appointment in town. Do you want me to stay on this guy? No. Keep after this elusive Mr. Johnson. Tell him, what have you come up with on the Sloan's and the Milburn project? Jason Sloan was just a general contractor working for Althea's father when he married her. Seems he hasn't managed her money very well. He's lost almost all of her land except for a 300-acre tract south of the airbase. But the site of the Milbourne Center is north of town. <laughs> I know. But uh, from what I can gather, Jason Sloan worked out a land swap with the government for that 50-acre parcel. Now we need specifics. Also... Call the air base. See if the wing commander can see me first thing in the morning. Do you know when you'll be back? I'm not sure. Mr. Mason? 
Mason. Thank you for seeing me, General. We didn't give you much notice. Sorry to keep you waiting. I feel responsible for what's happened to Colonel Parks. Because you requested his transfer here to Kirby as senior pilot instructor? Yes. He was a skilled pilot. I believed him to be an officer of great integrity. Then you must find it hard to believe he murdered Miss Sawyer and Mr. McCarran. I don't believe that. Now, how can I help you, Mr. Mason? What can you tell me about the land trade made with Jason Sloan? It won't be a trade officially. We needed to expand our dependent housing. Uh, when Sloan suggested the old Melbourne factory site, it seemed the perfect solution. Sloan offered to donate their land if we would sell them ours. Doesn't that seem odd to you? Oh, not with what he wants to do. The old factory site is right in line with our flight path. Any commercial development down there would be doomed from the start. But what does that have to do with Colonel Parks? We're pursuing a number of different leads. I'd like to talk to Lieutenant Wilkins while I'm here, if you have no objections. Wilkins, I certainly have no objections. That's our tag, all right. But trying to find a customer with just that? <laughs> You're asking a lot, mister. You sure? I get long hair, full beard. Maybe somebody else here has seen him. There's not anybody else here. I'm it, and I've been it for better than five years, and I don't have any customer looks like that. Sorry. Roger, Red Eye 01. You are cleared for takeoff. Winds are 12 knots at 1 niner, 0 degrees. Engine and instruments, good. Temperatures looking good. I'm ready for takeoff. Roger, Red Eye 01. Okay, Wilkie, make this a good one. We got us a VIP watch. We having fun now. Who's out there? And this is our flight simulator control room, Mr. Mason. Lieutenant Wilkins is flying the simulator now. It's Peterson and some guy named Mason. Roger. Flags released now. Roger, red eye zero one. Red Eye Zero One, you are trailing smoke. I repeat, you are trailing smoke. Red Eye Zero One, do you copy? Kirby Tower on guard, confirm smoke. Red Eye Zero One, smoke confirmed. You are on fire. I repeat, you are on fire. Not now. Please, God, not now. Come on, Wilkie, talk to me. Red Eye zero 01, engine and temperature redlining. Do you copy? I repeat, you are on fire. What are your intentions? Get up, get up. What's he doing in there? I don't know, Captain. Come on, Wilkie, you're losing it. Red Eye zero 01, eject. I repeat, eject. Lieutenant Wilkins, my name is Mason. I'm Colonel Park's attorney. Sir? Are you feeling all right? You seem to be having some difficulty in there. I'm oh, fine. I just got confused about fire takeoff procedure, sir. Perhaps you wouldn't mind answering a few questions regarding your testimony in Colonel Park's trial. Don't you come in here and start asking me a whole lot of questions about something that happened a long time ago. I have nothing to add to the record. 
It's bad enough I had to testify against my own squadron commander. I'll see you at the hearing tomorrow. Sir? Good morning, counsel. In the matter of People versus Kevin Parks. People ready? Yes, Your Honor. Defense ready? We are, Your Honor. Mr. Rusty, you may call your first witness. The people call Sergeant Clifford Brock. Sergeant Brock, when you investigated Lester McCarran's death, did you find anything of significance at the scene of the shooting? Yes, we found threads on a nail in the back door leading to the restaurant. Are these the threads to which you are referring? Those are the threads. Let the record show that uh, Sergeant Brock has indicated the threads that are marked People's Exhibit 12. Did you find the garment from which these threads came? The threads were an obvious match to a tear in the suit coat, which was found on the front seat next to the defendant at the time of his arrest. Would this jacket, marked People's Exhibit 14, be the coat that you found? That is the coat. I show you now People's Exhibit 15 and ask if you recognize it. That is a 38 revolver, which was also found in the car next to the defendant at the time of his arrest. It has been stipulated by defense that People's Exhibit 15 was indeed the murder weapon. It has been further stipulated by defense that the defendant's fingerprints were found on this revolver. Sergeant, was a paraffin test performed? Uh, yes, it was. The paraffin test was performed by me on the hands of the defendant, and it indicated he had recently fired a weapon. Thank you, Sergeant Brock. No further quest questions. Thank you, Mr. Reston. Mr. Mason. Now, Sergeant, isn't it true that none of Colonel Park's fingerprints were found at the scene of the crime? I was correct, Mr. Mason. That means not on the back door of the restaurant, not on its doorknob, not on its door handle, not anywhere. That is also correct, Mr. Mason. So it's possible, is it not, for another person to have placed this revolver in Colonel Park's hand while he was unconscious, and then to have caused it to fire, leaving traces of gunpowder on his hand. Objection. Assumes facts not in evidence and calls for speculation. Sustained. Sergeant, you're an experienced investigator. Did you find the absence of fingerprints at the restaurant unusual? Well, Mr. Mason, it has been known to happen, and besides, we did find those threads, sir. Oh, yes, threads. With the court's indulgence, defense would like to engage in a brief demonstration. What sort of demonstration, Mr. Mason? A demonstration relating to threads, those just mentioned by the sergeant. All right, Mr. Mason, the court has no objections. Mr. Reston? No objection, Your Honor. Now, Sergeant, that door frame has been marked Defense Exhibit D for identification. Please examine it and tell us if you recognize it. I recognize it, Mr. Mason. It is a back door frame from Langley's restaurant. <laughs> I sure hope Mr. Langley knows about this, sir. He does, Sergeant. I hope you appreciate the trouble he went to in getting that door frame to this court. All right, Sergeant, that nail. The nail where you found the suit threads. Has it been moved or adjusted in any way? No, Mr. Mason, same place. You're sure? I'm positive, Mr. Mason. Thank you. Colonel Parks, would you please stand over there near the sergeant? Now, Colonel, would you please stand within the door frame? Sergeant, wouldn't you agree that his shoulder would be at least 
four inches lower than the nail in that door frame. About four inches, Mr. Mason, or more. Thank you, Colonel. Oh, uh, one more thing, Sergeant. Uh, please sit down. Now, defense requested that you bring a locket to this court. The locket that was recovered from the body of Lester McCarran after his death. Is that this locket? That is the locket, Mr. Mason. Thank you, Sergeant. No further questions. I ask that this locket be marked Defense Exhibit E for identification. It shall be so marked. Mr. Reston? I have no questions at this time, Your Honor. You may step down. Your Honor, the defense has a witness who has traveled a great distance to get here today. We request that she be permitted to testify um, out of order. Who is the witness, Mr. Mason? The decedent's widow, Your Honor. Denise McCarran. Mrs. McCarran. I've shown you this locket, Defense Exhibit E. Now I ask you if you recognize it. Yes. My husband gave it to me when we were married. I always wear it. Do you know how it came to be in your husband's pocket at the time of his death? No, I don't. On the evening before Lester was to testify, I was shopping. On my way out of the market, I was knocked down, and some man tore it off my neck. Where were you when your husband was testifying? I'd received a message that my sister had been in an automobile accident at Channing. I drove out to the hospital there. How was your sister? She was fine. There hadn't been any accident. Just a ruse to get you out of town. Objection, Your Honor. Where is Mr. Mason going with all this? Mr. Mason. Defense is attempting to show a connection between those events and Mr. McCarran's death. I'll allow it for the moment. Mrs. McCarran, before your husband was to testify, hadn't the two of you been receiving threats? Uh, there were some phone calls. They made me edgy, very edgy, but Lester thought they were just crank calls, at least at first. Weren't they, in fact, part of a systematic campaign to terrorize your husband? A campaign climaxed by the delivery of your locket to him with the suggestion that your life would be in danger were he to testify? Mr. Mason, I... I just don't... Objection. Argumentative calls for complete speculation by the witness. I'm going to sustain the objection. Mrs. McCarran, I'm sure the whole court offers you its sympathy. I thank you for coming here under very trying circumstances. I have no further questions. No questions. I have the reports from the phone company that you wanted. Were you able to come up with any more on Sloan's land deal? Only the original environmental survey that was filed with the county land office. But, Perry, this report was supposedly done by just one engineer. And none of the pages in the second half match the typeface or the papers in the first half. Did you speak with the engineer? He moved back east. He was offered a better job. Della, did he take the job? Yes. About the time I submitted this report. All right. I'll take these. You'll find that engineer. Yes, sir. You forgot to salute. <laughs>
Sheriff's Department, please. Yeah, hello, I'd like to speak with a Sergeant Brock. Sergeant, this is Paul Drake. I got your man Johnson. He's at a liquor store at the corner of Sheridan and uh, Colfax. All right. Inside. All right, then we got a possible hostage situation. I want everybody to be careful. Lieutenant Wilkins, I understand the Air Force is a family tradition. My father and grandfather were both Air Force officers, sir. And as an officer and gentleman, you're bound by a code that goes beyond the oath you took in this courtroom. Yes, sir, I am. You knew Amy Beth Sawyer, did you not? Uh, no. As I testified at Colonel Park's previous trial, I, I really barely knew her. Barely knew her. Tell me, does the telephone number 555-4927 sound familiar to you? I don't think so. Lieutenant, isn't it true that there were more than 30 calls from the phone in your quarters to Miss Sawyer's condominium during the month prior to her death? I wouldn't know that. Lieutenant Wilkins, you called Miss Sawyer frequently, and you were very close friends. Now, isn't that true? Yes. All right, Lieutenant, what is the drug Meclizine used for? I wouldn't know that. Oh, please, Lieutenant, I, I don't ask these questions lightly. Now, you take Meclizine, do you not? Yes. And you take it for what condition? Recurrent vestibular neuronitis. In layman's terms, an inner ear problem that causes extreme dizziness. A condition that could end a pilot's career. Isn't that so? Yes. And in the course of your secret affair with Miss Sawyer, she discovered your condition. Isn't that so? Yeah. Yes, she, uh... She wanted me to, to talk to Colonel Parks about it, but I knew that he would just have to report that. And uh, I tried to keep it under control with drugs. Miss Sawyer knew about your condition and was a threat to your Air Force career. You had to be sure that she would remain silent. Isn't that so? No. No, it's not. I wouldn't and I couldn't. I love Beth. I believe that's probably true, Lieutenant. No further questions. May this witness be excused? Yes, Your Honor, I have no questions. You may step down. And you didn't show up for lunch. I think something might have happened. Well, we have Johnson trapped inside. All 
right, Eric, take a couple of men and go in and search the place. Hey, Mr. Drake, I sure don't see a mountain man. Well, I don't see him either. Sergeant, none of these folks recall seeing a fellow like this guy described. Now, wait a minute. I saw the guy. Go in. Wait. Now, you saw him in there, too. No, I didn't. I was just taking your word for it. Hey, Sarge, the place is empty. You know, if I thought it would do any good, I'd file charges against you. Mr. Drake? A Captain O'Malley called. Said she wanted you to meet her at the Off the Alley Cafe for breakfast. Said something about knowing who Mr. Johnson is. Oh, yes, right. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I didn't call you. I, I just got in. Well, now that's what I thought. Then it's a setup. Well, then you better call Sergeant Brock. No, I think I've cried wolf one too many times as far as he's concerned. You can't go out there by yourself. Well, I think I have to. Well, then I'm going to call him, Paul. Well, maybe he'll believe you. See you later. Is defense ready to call us next witness, Mr. Mason? It was our hope to, Your Honor, but defense may have to request a short recess as our next witness has not yet arrived. Well, if it's Chester Lackberry you're waiting for, you needn't bother, because he's right here. Your Honor, defense calls Chester Lackberry. <laughs> Mr. Lackberry, prior to moving out of the state, you were the engineer responsible for testing certain lands before they were traded or sold. Is that correct? You got it. 29 years. Never missed a day of work. And why, after 29 years, did you decide to leave your post? Somebody up and offered me a better job, that's why. In Albany, New York, for about twice the pay, too. Didn't it surprise you, Mr. Lackberry, to be offered a new position with a substantial increase in salary? As far away as Albany? Well, I admit, came out of the blue at me. <laughs> Do you recall, sir, what you were working on when this piece of good fortune happened to strike you? Oh, well, let's see. That would have to be the soil survey on Milburn's old land. Something about a fancy kind of land swap with the Air Force Base. I'm right, ain't I? Mr. Lackberry, I show you Defense Exhibit F. Do you recognize it? Oh, shoot. I started going in 78, won't come back for love or money. Uh, Mr. Mason. Well, that'll help. Is that the report you submitted to the Air Force? Well, yes and no. What do you mean, yes and no? Well, the first part's mine, all right. Typed it myself in my old portable. The second part? Well, I know that I didn't type that. How do you know that, Mr. Lankberry? Because it's plump jackass wrong, that's why. It says here, Milburn's old land is is safe to build on. And you believe the land is not safe? Of course it isn't. Old Milburn had a big chemical factory out there dumped straight into the ground. Land's toxic as a witch's wash. You can't build on that land. Not now, not ever. Thank you, Mr. Lackberry. Thank you. Your Honor. Mr. Mason. Uh, no further questions. Mr. Reston. I have no uh, questions, Your Honor, but for the record, uh, the people have a continuing objection to this entire line of testimony. Defense calls Mr. Jason Sloan.
And aren't you personally negotiating the contract between your company and the Air Force for the building of the Milburn Center? Yes, that's correct. You arranged for the rights to purchase 50 acres of government-owned land north of town by donating 300 acres of the old Milburn factory site. Yes. A site Mr. Lackberry has just testified was toxic as a witch's wash. I never saw that report in my life. Never saw it? Never saw it, Mr. Sloan? In spite of the fact that the Milburn Project represents your company's largest undertaking? A project that, should it fail, would drive you certainly into bankruptcy? Althea, Mrs. Sloan and uh, her brother Ellis Milburn handled all the paperwork. And Amy Beth Sawyer. Wouldn't her job have given her access to all your company's transactions? Yes, I guess so. That would have been part of her work. So she would have had access to Mr. Lackberry's report detailing the soil conditions at the old Milburn factory site, wouldn't she? Yes, I guess she would. You also knew that if officials at the Air Force Base learned of any problems with the land, they would cancel the deal at once. Objection. Calls for speculation from the witness. Withdraw the question. At the time of her murder, Miss Sawyer was living in a condominium owned by your company. Isn't that correct? Yes. A condominium to which you always had a key. Of course I had a key, but that doesn't Mr. mean anything. Mr. Sloan, if Miss Sawyer had told Colonel Parks about that report, you would have been ruined. You had motive, means, opportunity. I didn't kill Amy Beth. Why should we believe you? Because I loved her. I never laid a hand on that girl, but heaven help me, I loved her. No further questions. Your Honor... May I have a moment to confer with Mr. Drake? Very well. <coughs> uh, Mr. Reston. Your Honor, at the request of defense counsel, I will forego my cross-examination of this witness for the moment, so that counsel may continue. You may step down, Mr. Sloan. I, uh... I now call Althea Sloan to the stand. The assets of your husband's company really came from land and money you inherited from your father. Isn't that correct, Mrs. Sloan? Yes. And your husband hasn't had much success managing those assets, has he? It's not his fault. He works hard. Things just never seem to uh, come together. And the Milbourne Center would be the last chance for either of you to see your inheritance restored, wouldn't it? The old factory site was uh, all we had left. But you knew, you both knew, there had once been a toxic chemical plant on that land, did you not? That was so long ago. That's why you arranged to have Chester Lackberry offered a higher paying job elsewhere. And why you arranged to have his survey report altered. I don't know what you're talking about. The typeface appearing on the altered portion of Mr. Lackberry's report matches that of the typewriter in your office. There must be thousands like it, Mr. Mason. Besides, anybody could have used my typewriter. Who, Mrs. Sloan? Why? Who else had so much to lose? I wouldn't know. Maybe, uh, Amy Beth changed the report. Amy Beth? 
Come now, Mrs. Sloan, come now. She had nothing to gain by altering this report. Now, at the first trial, you testified you'd taken calls for Miss Sawyer from Colonel Parks on the day of her murder. That you had, in fact, stayed on the line to overhear their conversation. I overheard him ask her about a problem that she did not wish to discuss on the telephone. It's all in the transcript. Yes, I have it here. All of it. You also overheard them arrange to meet at the condominium that night. I did. You must have thought that the problem they were discussing was the engineer's report, the one that you had deliberately changed. I don't remember what I thought. Isn't it true that to protect what remained of the Milbourne legacy, you arranged to have Amy Beth Sawyer murdered and Colonel Parks framed for that murder? No, that is not true. Who is Frank Johnson, Mrs. Sloan? I don't know. Then you don't care to know that just over an hour ago, the man who calls himself Frank Johnson had a serious accident and was taken to the county hospital. Oh, my God. Was he... Hurt? Are you asking if your brother, Ellis Milborn, was hurt? Please. Is Ellis all right? He is in serious condition. But the doctors believe the prognosis is fair. Now, Mrs. Sloan, it was your brother, disguised as Frank Johnson, who killed Amy Beth Sawyer, wasn't it? It was your brother who killed Lester McCarran, wasn't it? It was your brother who framed Colonel Parks, wasn't it? There was no other way. My father had worked so hard. He'd left us so much. Jason lost it. Lost everything except that useless piece of land where the factory once stood. It was Ellis's idea. Jason didn't have to know anything about it. But Amy Beth knew. She knew too much. It was our way out. Ellis blamed Jason, and he blamed me. So I went along with it. It was Ellis's idea. Your Honor, defense moves to drop all charges against this defendant. I will, at the appropriate time, move to set aside the conviction in the other case and exonerate this defendant fully. The prosecution concurs. So ordered. The bailiff is instructed to take Mrs. Sloan into custody. Court is now adjourned. reinstatement. We're just going for a little reorientation ride. Come on, Kevin. Look, I'm not one for speeches, but uh, I would like to say that... <laughs> he thanks you. And I do, too. More than you can ever know. Thank you all very, very much. You're welcome. Well, it uh, gave me a chance to meet the captain, take a helicopter ride, 
Well, if you give me a chance, I'll teach you to fly one. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, Paul. We have a plane to catch. I take it you are not going with us. Actually, Terry has offered to drive me home. Oh, that's a long drive. It is, isn't it? So don't expect to call for a few days. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You know, Perry, that's not a bad idea. Taking a long, leisurely drive home. I'll even drive if you will trust me not to get lost. <laughs> I have a better idea. You mean you would take the train? No. I want to.